everybody, my name is Rachel and welcome to my channel, Colinati. Today's review is of Necropolis by Maureen F. McHugh. You guys know that I absolutely loved her debut novel, China Mountain Zhang. It is going to be one of my favorite books of the entire year, so I had to go out and find more of McHugh's work. She's not an incredibly prolific author, it seems. She only has a couple of novels out, and the next one that I picked up was Necropolis. Necropolis is another science fiction novel, and it is set in a version of Morocco sometime in the future. There are two advanced technologies in the story that I need to describe first because they are at the heart of the story's dilemmas. The first are what are called Harni or Chimera. They are people or beings uh, who are grown rather than born. They are genetically modified and designed for specific purposes, such as heavy labor or pleasure and prostitution. That, that always seems to come up. They are psychologically molded to the jobs they're supposed to have, and in Morocco, they are not considered to be people. The second is jessing, and I believe this term comes from jesses, which are the straps put on hawks to control them. Jessing is a way to chemically induce loyalty. In most of this world, it is used on animals, such as bonding horses to their owners, and it's illegal to jess humans, but not so in Morocco, where there is an entire system of, like, paid servitude. With that established, Necropolis is about a male Harney and a just woman who fall in love and the consequences of their desperate attempt to be together. Our central character is Hariba, a young woman who is just. She has, in less coded terms, sold herself into servitude because she is young, very poor, and believes she'll never get married. She doesn't have many options, and being just means she's got a pretty stable life, and she is paid better than she would be if she took some other job. After about five years, the household she works in acquires a male Harney. And at first, Hariba wants nothing to do with him. His name is Akmem, but she has to interact with him. And over time, they get to know each other and they bond, they fall in love. And it's literally bonding because Akmem is, unbeknownst to her, a pleasure Harney, and he is supposed to bond with a person and then want to serve them, want to make that person happy. He just happens to bond with Hariba. And Hariba reciprocates. She needs him. She needs somebody to be intimate with who is kind to her, so in her own way, she bonds with him as well. But then Hariba is sold to another household and is separated from Akmem. In desperation, she convinces him to run away and they escape to the necropolis, which is the part of the city that she grew up in and where her family is from. She becomes deathly ill because she is defying her dressing and both of them are on the run because they're technically property that has escaped. I want to talk about the writing of this first. The prose here is very simple. A, a good term for it is spare. It is unadorned, and the style is effective and very quick to read. But at times I felt like it was too simplistic, almost childish, and that was enhanced by how simply the characters seem to act and think and feel. I'm trying to not be judgmental or uncharitable towards these characters because this is the way they are, but they lack really meaty conversations or introspection. This isn't a mistake, by the way. It's true. The characters are very uneducated, ignorant, poor, sheltered, traditional. They have very, very few options to choose from, but I thought that the story itself felt too simple because of the lack of detail or richness in the writing. And now, the love, the relationship here. Hariba wants to be loved. She lacks that person or that figure in her life. So she wants to be needed, she wants to be taken care of, and therefore she becomes the perfect object to attract Akmim, who is designed to fill that kind of role. And 
So I struggle with saying that they're actually in love with each other. I cannot fault them, but it was frustrating to see them go down this path. They think they're in love, so they act on it. That decision disrupts their life and upends everybody else's lives too. But I don't think they were actually in love, not everlasting romantic love. It's desperate, convenient, ignorant love, and they can't see what's happening to themselves. I was frustrated and upset, not just by the situation, but also by how other characters react to it. They struggle with Achmem because he is Harney. They view him as inhuman or an abomination. They don't want to interact with him, and they keep trying to write him out of the equation when he is an integral part of solving the problem. I was appalled by Hariba's mother and her best friend because they seem so ready and willing to just get rid of Hariba. They want her gone and they are very reluctant to help her. Hariba is dying, she's wasting away, and there's a point where her mother seriously considers turning her into the police because upholding the law is more important than taking care of her daughter, of protecting her daughter. And I, I can understand this up to the point where her mother wants to turn her in to the very police that she's just watched beat her son bloody in front of her. What does she think they're going to do to her daughter? The point here may be she doesn't think about it. This is the system. This is how it works and her internal conflict, her own thoughts about it, are muddy. For me, Necropolis is about no-win situations, when no decision is the right one, life doesn't get better, the characters just exchange one set of problems for another. And I want to add up the math and see if they come out ahead, but it doesn't work that way. I enjoyed Necropolis quite a bit, in fact. I should probably bump up my rating of it because it certainly made me think and feel. I disagree, like, in my very bones with some of these characters, and that it made me feel that strongly is a sign of a good and effective story. That's Necropolis by Maureen F. McHugh. If you've read the story or you want to, please comment down below and talk to me. Thank you very much for watching this review, and I will talk to you again soon. Bye.